So we're going to talk about a topic. Uh, there, there might be some confusion in the body about marijuana. It's come to my attention. So we're going to deal with marijuana. It should not be that confusing, I would think, because that's a basic thing that we cover from the outset. Why? Because that's something that's strong in our people. That's a stumbling block. That's a vice, right? Uh, but for the sake of edification for the whole body, we're going to have to discuss that a little bit today, all right? So, uh, usually, one of the scriptures people go to to justify marijuana use is Genesis 1 and 29. So let's go there. We're going to go step by step. This is going to be real basic. You know me, I got some definitions. I have a little article and I have some video even for us to look at. We're going to obliterate the doctrine that these two scriptures that we're going to start with means it's okay to take psychoactive drugs, whether they're man-made or natural. The, the issue is psychoactive because you need to be of a sober mind. And let me ask you a question. If you're not sober, do you always know that you're not sober? Right? You don't always know when you've drank too much, right? You don't always know when you've per passed a certain limit. And a strong sign about that is somebody gets defensive about them not being past a certain limit. So the excuse that it has no effect on you, that's not, the, that, that's, that's just, it works in one respect and not the other. We're going we're gonna to blow all that out the water today, all right? Let's get Genesis 1, 29. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. You see, it said herb, brother. We could, we could, we could use the herb, right? Hey, and we're going to cover smoking and eating because the carnal man will make an excuse according to his lust, Right? And he'll say, well, I ain't smoking it, I'm eating it. As if that makes it better. I'm telling you, I'm going to show you information today that shows you eating it's actually worse than smoking it. It's more potent when you eat it because of the way the body works. But there's people here in IUIC Phoenix that think this is okay. That you can use marijuana and it not impact you. Hey, and I'm just gonna—I'm gonna cut to the chase. I'm, I'm gonna lay it all out, and then we're gonna address it again with the scriptures. And guess what? If you have pains, aches in your body, I'm gonna use you as an example. You have knee issues, right? You—you you have a thing with gout, right? Did you take marijuana or did you take CBD, which does not have the psychoactive component of marijuana? CBD. Right. But, I mean, even then, there was after extensive research and right. extensive testing and because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't THC and everything else. THC, because THC is the component of marijuana that needs to be removed. Yes, is the hemp plant a, a, a miraculous plant, like they say? Yes, you can make rope out of that thing, clothing. You can get protein out of that thing. But when you want to use the flower buds, which is the component that has the most CHC, and throw that in some brownies or throw that in a, and roll, some, roll up a spliff or a blunt, or whatever y'all calling it nowadays. We called it a spliff and a blunt back in the day. Whatever y'all calling it nowadays, uh, reefer, whatever you're calling it nowadays, that's against what the scriptures say. So someone will say herb, and they'll go from there. Read verse 29 from the top again. Verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Right? It says, To you it shall be for meat. So the perverted mind, the mind that doesn't understand. Where's that? Uh, where it talks about the spiritual the natural man cannot receive. Mm -hmm. Let me get that real quick. I didn't have that down, but we, we need to bring that out. Oh. It's on the captain get a liar, bringing out the precepts. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Right, uh, the natural man. And let me, uh, let me ask a question. How many of us have the natural man in us? Everybody's hand should be raised. Everybody. I've been going over all that stuff. Galatians 5.17, right? Con one's contrary to the other. Every one of us has the natural man in us. So you got to know that there's a side of you that's not going to see the spiritual things. Read it from the top again. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. And what's heavy, it says, receiveth not. I, I love the emphasis, the specificity of words in the Bible. It means you can hear it. It means you can nod your head at it and say yes, but you might not be able to always receive it. Because to receive it means it'll have an effect on you. And the effect should be that you leave off from whatever it is that the Bible tells you not to do. Read on. For they are foolish unto him. It's foolish unto them. You know how it's foolish? They might not make a joke of it. They might not make a mockery, but they don't receive it. They don't apply it. So it becomes foolishness to them. Come on. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. See, some things are spiritually discerned. And there's ways to deal with that so that you can gain the spirit. Again, I often reference Romans 7 was a stumbling block for me. They, I was still fighting the stronger presence of the natural man. Because the longer you're in this, the stronger the spiritual man or woman should be versus the natural man. We all have the natural man in us, but the longer you're in this, the, the, the more spiritual you should be, not less. And something as basic as this should not be problematic. It should not be problematic for people to receive. Now, let's go back to Genesis 1. The book read, of, read verse 30. Book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 30. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every herb for meat, and it was so. And I want verse 30 because it also shows you, do uh, animals go and smoke weed? Um, you look at those animal shows and things like that, they actually stay away from certain uh, plants and things like that because they know the effect it would have on them. If I'm a lion, right, or I'm the prey of a lion, let's just say I'm a wildebeest, and I'm eating a plant or I'm grazing on a grass that makes me high, that eliminates my ability to avoid the lion, right? And they innately know that. We have more senses and faculties. You see, this is why in uh, Isaiah 1 and 3, the Most High says we are dumb ass. Some of us are a dumb ass. Some of us are like a dumb ox. Yet even they know who they belong to. Even they have more sense than us. Sometimes we're too smart for our own good. And we let the self-talking and everything else get in our way to rationalize whatever behavior we want to justify. So he's telling you, the animals don't go and say, well, it's medicinal. The animals don't do that. That's, see, that's in the, in the, in the gifts that the Most High gave us, like the seven gifts that you read in the Apographer, there also has to be caution within that, right? With great power comes that great responsibility. With that great understanding comes more potential pitfalls. If anything, the creation, even in their awareness, they got it, they got it simple. We have more complexities in the way we got to walk and the way we got to live. But that's the price of us being gods. That's the price of us being above the creation. You were going to say something? Oh, okay, so you moved the mic. Let's get Sirach 38 and 4, because then you get this one as a justification for marijuana use. The book of Sirach, chapter 38 and verse 4. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. See, it's medicinal. Well, I got a bunch of other things to break down. Like I said, uh, we use the CBD. You have the psychoactive component that shouldn't be there. But here's something that people like to, that again, if you just go to that scripture, you isolate. Let's start at verse 1. We're going to read 1 through 7. Verse 1. Honor a physician with the honor due unto him for the uses which he may have of him. 
For the Lord hath created him. Letting you know that all this health advice that he's giving starts at the hand of the physician. I'm going to prove that to you as we continue to read these verses. Because then the next thing is, well, I, I'm going to self-medicate. We actually did with Sister Safia here a whole series on the Power Hour where she cautioned about y'all running out and using herbs and things without proper understanding. Where does that proper understanding come from? Not from the internet, not from yourself to self-diagnose, right? Not from your boys, not from some book, not from your own understanding. See, this is why it says that in Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on your own understanding. Because you'll find a way to justify whatever it is that your lusts are. You will find a way and try to bring it into subjection into the scripture. And that's worse than somebody that's just ignorant and is out there sinning. Because you've been enlightened. You've been shown things that kings and rulers of the earth desire to see. And their ears cannot understand them. Their eyes cannot understand them. Read on. Verse 2. For of the most high cometh healing. See, and we forget this part. Of the most high at the end of the day comes the healing. Everything else in there is mediums. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the machine. It's the mechanism by which he provides the healing. Come on. And he shall receive honor of the king. The skill of the physician shall lift up his head. The skill of the physician. The skill of the physician. Doesn't just mean they come there with a stethoscope. It means they'll prescribe the things to you that'll help you. Now listen, we've, we've gone at great lengths, so nobody get ignorant and say just take every drug that they give you. Right? Sister Safia is a great example. She's a, a, is it holistic or homeopathic? She's a holistic doctor. Right? And it, her, her uh, education is a hybrid. They deal with medicines like antibiotics and things like Tylenols and ibuprofens. But their focus is to try to address it another way first. But the skill of the physician lets them know when that's applicable and when that's not. When you need something more potent and when not to. Come on. And in the sight of great men, he shall be in admiration. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth. And he that is wise will not abhor so them. So the reason he's saying that is because he, the, the Most High knew that our people would have this uh, avergence, this avoidance to medicines, this avoidance to the physician. That's indicative of our people. I, I had to take a class when I was going for uh, a health and nutrition major. I never finished it, but I had to do a class on the healthcare system. And one of the things that they go into is how demographically I had to do a paper, why is it that our people tend to be ones with higher medical issues and things like that? Now, obviously, we know spiritually, first and foremost, that's because of the curses that the Most High put on our people. But there's this mindset in our communities, whether you're a believing Israelite or not, of avoidance of medical professionals, of avoidance of medicine and things like that. But then we'll so cavalierly just put whatever in our body when it comes to, let me get my, my not sober-mindedness on, right? When we, were, when we were in the world and we would drink to excess and some of us would use different drugs and different things like that, oh, I never go to a doctor or a dentist. Oh, word, that thing gonna make me feel good? Yeah, what pop? You never ask what's in it. You, you might ask what it's called and you, and you just took it. It don't make sense. That's what I'm saying. That the animals got more sense than we do in some things as much as we're over them in intelligence. Read on. Verse 5. Was not the water made sweet with wood, that the virtue thereof might be known? So he's letting you know. What he's really saying here is that there's a way to identify what is right for you, what is a medicine for you, and what isn't. Come on. And he hath given men skill, that he might be honored in his marvelous works. He's emphasizing that it takes men with skill, meaning the physicians or the like, to be able to tell you what you should take and what you shouldn't take out of those medicines of the earth. Come on. And with such doth he heal men that taketh away their pain. With such. The with such is the physician. Not the medicines, the physician. That's the context of that verse, verse 4. So when you sit there and you try to use those scriptures as an example, you're not receiving the spiritual things of God. 
you're creating excuses so that you can continue to pursue your lust. That's what that's going into. So what does the Most High say about us and that type of behavior? Let's get 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? So that's a rhetorical question. Do we know that? Do we know that we're the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwell in us, right? Except we be reprobate. Read on. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? There's different forms of defiling. It's not just to excess. Taking something that has an unintended effect or a side effect that's contrary to what the scriptures will bring out creates problems in your spirit. If evil communication corrupts good manner, you're telling me that a drug has no effect on you? It's a known drug. That's what people take it for. And you're saying... It don't get you high. It don't make you not sober-minded. That don't make sense. And how can you tell? Do crazy people know they crazy? A lot of times they don't. So why would you presume you take something that's known to have an effect on your mental state and think that you're going to be all right, that it don't affect you? It don't make sense. Let's get 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. And then even then, why, why take it if it has no effect on you then? Mm. So that makes no sense. Right. So then it does have an effect no. on you. No. So, or then if, if, if the THC has no effect on you, then just get the CBD. That's the part that uh, actually is medicinal. When I went to the VA hospital numerous times, over and over and over again to figure out what was wrong with me as far as arthritis, gout, everything else. I was told to get a license to smoke marijuana numerous times, but numerous times I said, no, I don't want to take pills and I don't want to smoke marijuana. I don't, I don't want no THC. So then they started having me research CBD. There's, there's a, a vast amount of other options out there for you to take other than just saying, okay, cool. Because I could have came and said, hey, hey listen, my, my doctor said this. Never once did I come to either one of you and say, hey, listen, my doctor said I should smoke weed. Yeah. Because I already knew that that's against the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. Give me, give me some rock 38 and 9 real quick. Because right, this is what a lot of us fail to realize. All right? And this is where, remember the class I did, I brought up faith, Hebrews 11 and 1. All right, for the new moon. The book of Sirach, chapter 38, verse 9. My son, in thy sickness. In thy sickness. Your illness, whatever you got going on that's not right with your body. Be not negligent. Be not negligent. Now, this, this, what, what's after that? A colon? Yep. All right, so that means it's going to explain what he's talking about in that sentence in the next sentence. Go ahead. But pray unto the Lord. Wait, 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 wait. What does it say to do? But pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord. And he will make thee whole. And he will make thee whole. And he will make thee whole. Prayer. The Most High is not the author of confusion, right? So he's going to make you whole, and he ain't going to put a breaking of the commandment as part of the remedy. Does that make sense? He ain't going to if, if, if smoking weed, eating weed, doing anything other than what you're supposed to do with herbs is, uh, is against the commandment, why is he going to tell you? That you should do that. He's not the author of confusion, right? That would be confusion, would it not be? Same reason why you don't go over scriptures when you're drunk. Because your mind ain't right. Your spirit ain't right. Right, so I have a question on that. I want brothers to answer this. What is the sin in smoking or consuming weed? Not CBD, smoking or consuming weed. Jehoiakim. So they're gonna say we just saying that. Oh, you just listening to me. What is the what is the thing that makes that a sin? Witchcraft. Most high Christ bless leadership. Uh, Tobias. Let me show Tobias. Soldier Tobias. Um, 
Shalom. It would be idolatry. Nope. No? It could come, come to that. Uh, that was what you were going to say, Joseph? Okay, go ahead, Joseph. Shalom, leadership. Uh, the altering of your mind. What, are you, what does the Bible call that? Um, what are we commanded to be? Sober-minded. Mm. So there is the sin. Was that what y'all were going to say, officers? Yes? Okay. There is, was that what you were going to say, Ezekiel? You got something else? Let me hear what you got to say. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. For me personally, it took me out the mind of not even thinking about the most high. Right. Well, that's the sober-mindedness. That's the sober-mindedness. A sober mind is the mind that's on this, that's on this Bible, right? Let our mind be the mind of Christ, right? I'm paraphrasing that. Let our mind be the mind of Christ. That's what the scriptures say. So, yes, yeah, so it's, uh, you know from experience that it took your mind away from that stuff, right? So the sin, I just want to be clear, and if there's any confusion, is that it takes you out of having a sober mind. We are commanded to be sober-minded. It's the same sin that's in drunkenness, like Cap was saying. That's why you don't go over scriptures when you're drunk. It's not a sober mind. Right. Because now you say drunkenness, right? Some people say, oh, well, that's just talking about alcohol. But we already know how Israel is, right? They do not consider. Right? Mm -hmm. so, you ever heard of the expression, he's punch drunk on boxes? You ain't right. You can't talk right. You ain't thinking right. You all jacked up. It's the same difference. Right. You can say he's it's drunk a, with love. Right. It's he's a drunk, drunk with right, lust. Right. Right. You're not thinking right. Mm -hmm. When you're drunk with love, right, what's that mean, man? You're so infatuated that you... You lose, the scripture talks about that. A man who loses uh, uh, everything for a woman. That's called drunkenness. You're drunk, you're drunk of what the Punani did to you. That's what you're drunk of. I'm serious. I got to tell her what it is. That's what it is. You know, it is. When you're punch drunk, you ain't thinking right. Drunk falls in many areas. A lot of people just say, oh, it just means I'm an alcoholic. No, it don't mean that only. Drunkenness is anything that's contrary to the Bible that's making you feel all jacked up in your mind. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's what the scripture says. You're drunken, but not with wine. Right. That's a good point. Right? Right. Because there's, that's a good there's, point. Because there's many ways that you can be drunk, but not with alcohol. But in, even with alcohol, let's say we're getting together, having a barbecue. You have one, two beers. You're still there. It takes one hit of weed to just really take you away from being here on earth and now being up on the moon. That's all it takes. The one in Jeremiah that says Sodom's children. I got you. Four twenty-two. It's four twenty-two. Okay, I was looking for it. I was in four. I didn't think it was. It was twenty-two though. Uh, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna back up what was being said here because Sodom is a uh, synonym for drunk. All right. The book of Jeremiah, chapter four, verse twenty-two. For my people is foolish; they have not known me. They are Sodom's children. And they have none understanding. So he's explaining what, what, how they're sottish. They're foolish, meaning they're drunken with stupidness. They're drunken in ignorance. Come on. And they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but they, to do good they have no knowledge. Because they're not sober-minded. They're drunk on philosophies. They're drunk on lies. They're drunk on ignorance. They're drunk on stupidity. So... Just to emphasize that drunk doesn't necessarily mean it's not mutually exclusive to alcohol. Just like baptism doesn't is not mutually exclusive to being dunked in water. That's not what it means. Right. And when you're sober minded, I right, cap you brought it up. I'm gonna elaborate a little more on it. You're focused on the things of the Lord. When you're not sober minded, you start your mind goes to and fro. Right. You That's start what Ezekiel get, just said. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. start you start go, coming up with different doctrines. You start believing that. I could still go ahead and um, teach the Quran while I'm going ahead and teaching the Bible. Mm -hmm. right? We've heard that, right? There's no sin in that. I could have the Quran and the Bible at the same time. Listen, the only reason why you should have a Quran, because I have one, is to go ahead and bash that crap. Right. That's the right. only reason why you should have that. Smash them with their own book. Right. Because it's garbage. Right. That's the only reason. Not because, oh, well, there's a little bit of here, a little bit of here. No, you're not sober then. Hey, and if you want to get into an altered state to study the scriptures, do you know what that's called? Fasting. That's the altered state. You fast to get it. Because isn't that, isn't that what uh, Ezra was doing? He was fasting. He was putting himself in an altered state to be able to deal with the messenger of the Lord and to rewrite the scriptures. 
Right? Right. You don't eat peyote. Right. You don't eat peyote. You think you're going to go to that place. Right. That's how you get into that altered state. Fasting, if you want more understanding. Not let me, because Rastas will tell you they smoke weed and then break down scriptures. Yeah, it's called the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jasper. It's called all those other things outside of the scriptures. Right, exactly. Right, and not to say that those books don't exist. The Bible mentions them, but we don't have them. Do you know where you find the Book of Enoch in the bookstore? The bookstores that are left? Do you know where you find the Book of Enoch? In the section on magic. It's not even in the biblical section. I mean, that means Esau tells you that it was crap. Because guess what? When I first came in out of curiosity, I was looking for it. And I went to see it. And it was in the magic section. I said, damn, what the hell is this? Right next to uh, spells that right. you use. Dungeons and dragons. Spells, right? f- spells from your menstruation. It was right next to that one. It was spells that you could do. Because they got stuff like uh, that, I got to put the mic down now. They got st- it was right, bro. It was it was traumatizing to me. It was right next to a book on how you take your menstruation and use it to do different spells. Just to show you the credence of those other books. It's BS. Let's get First Corinthians six and nineteen. First Corinthians six and nineteen. The book of First Corinthians, chapter six and verse nineteen. What? Know ye not that your, that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? So now he expounds on that temple that he means. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It is made for the understanding in Christ for the laws to reside in. Come on. Which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Our bodies are of God. Our physicality, our physical manifestation is of God. We have of God. So what does that mean? It's not even ours. Remember, this ain't the final version of us. Spiritually, in our hearts, that's what's going to transfer if we make it into that changing, into that higher state. Our bodies don't belong to us. It's a rental. Hold on, let me get the next verse, and then you can bring it up. Verse 20. Verse 20. For ye are brought... For ye are bought with a price, therefore gl- glorify God in your body. What's that price? Just call it out. What's that price? Christ's blood. We are bought with a price. Christ's sacrifice. Right? So what should we do? What are we commanded? Therefore glorify God in your body, in your rental, in your loner that don't belong to you, that God gave to you. And how do you glorify God? By the keeping of his commandments. Let the understanding come unto you. Come on. And in your spirit, which are God's. We are belong to the most high. So that's where the self-will comes in. What we want to do. You know how like it says, uh, is it in Romans 9 where it says, so the thing form, say of it. Yeah. Why made us me so? Yep. No, right? So it's easy for us to understand that when you'll say, I made a cup out of clay. And... Should the, should the cup tell me, damn, man, why you made me this way? Why you made me short and fat? Why you made me skinny and tall? Why you made me with buck teeth? Why you made my, my hair fall out when I was 25? Right? It, we're not supposed to have that, that. That stuff don't do it. The creation doesn't do it. The wildebeest and the lion is not questioning the most high and saying, damn, man, why you let that lion get all the lion punani? And I'm here still trying to figure out. Where my pride is. Right. It don't go that way. That's 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 a us thing. But it should not be that way if you're in the right spirit. Go ahead. What are you gonna bring up? <laughs> so Cap said, our bodies ain't ours, right? But again, it goes back with Hebrews eleven and one, right? It says the f- to have faith is the substance of things not seen. So this proves in a sense what your faith really is at the level that you're at. Give me Jeremiah one and five. It's a very common scripture, we know it. But sometimes you got to take meat off these bones, man. Maybe there's still a little bit of gristle still stuck on the bone. I don't know. Y'all got to take that off. You got to eat the bone like my wife eats Hey, you know, what's, you know what's great about gristle? You know what's great about gristle? It tastes good. A lot of, it it that, looks like that, this. That thing got a lot of taste, yeah, yeah. the gristle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so don't leave the gristle behind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's got a lot of taste. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. <laughs> the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly. The most high God formed you, man. How you look, how you talk, how you walk, that's the most high. He formed you. 
Go ahead. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Uh huh. And before thou. How did he know us? Because the spirits get recycled. We go back to him until he decides to bring us back down. And then he's going to bring us down. He may come back, Wesley Snipes black. You may come back looking like a, 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 a Ed Sheeran white. Like, like, a, like a nephew. <laughs> <laughs> he look like Ed Sheeran, bro. He does. Yeah, he look like Ed Sheeran. He may come back like that. The most highs decides all of that. Go ahead. And before thou camest forth out of the womb. And this is what we need to focus on if we're really in the faith. I sanctified thee. He made us holy. And when you're holy, that means you're following the Holy Ghost. You following the Holy Ghost, you know that's the law. So you following the law. Go ahead. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. How could you go out there and prophesy to your people and bring your nation together under one stick if you ain't right? If you ain't following a commandment? You a hypocrite, man. Point blank. There's no other way of putting it. Go ahead. Right. Hey, and go back to 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. So that part in Jeremiah 1 and 5 where it says... Before he formed thee, that's the body part in verse 20, and when, uh, when he, bef the forming. And when he means before, that's the spirit part. So formed is the body, before means the spirit. This is what it means when we read verse 20, that last line. Read the whole verse, though. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20. For ye are bought with the price. Therefore glor glor glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Glorify which God in your body and in your spirit. Your body was deformed in the belly. And when he says before that he knew thee, that was the spirit that he was working with. Come on. Which are gods. Which are gods, right? So that backs up Jeremiah 1 and 5. Wait, wait, wait. That, that capital is the devil. Yes. The thing hid. Yes. With hid. Yep. The thing, the thing formed. So we shouldn't be trying to question these things. <laughs> Let's get, uh, you got something? Yeah. Uh, can I get Sirach 4 verse 17? Sirach 4 verse 17. All right, because we say it a lot, and I'm harping on it a lot in Vegas, too, because one of the things that I have, to my advantage, being over, over Vegas now, is that the blueprint's already there, which is the Bible, but I don't have to rewrite anything. Like, I don't have to reinvent the will. I'm going back and rewatching all of Kevin Yashua's classes and putting my own little twist on them and teaching them there. But it's the being born again process. It's the discipline process. It's the, it's the self-examination process that we lack as a people is why it's hindering growth and it's hindering us getting out of captivity. But read Sirach 4, verse 17. Sirach chapter 4, verse 17. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways. So if you read up in verse 1 and read down, it talks about the her is talking about wisdom. All right. The she is talking about wisdom. It walks with us by crooked ways. Why? Because we're not born again when we, when, we, when we first come into this walk. We have all these hang-ups and things that are tethering us to the world, our own lust, the things that we have inside of us. So wisdom is walking with us by crooked ways when we first come into this. Read. And bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline. So that wisdom will begin to torment us because the commandments put us into a box to where we think of all the things that we can't do Verses of what we will gain because our faith is very minimal in these last days. That's what Paul was saying in Romans 7 when you say put you in a box. And it makes you start to think of the things you can't do. That's when he says that which I do, I do not. Absolutely. That which I would do, I'm prohibited from doing. Right? Yep. Read on. Until she may trust his soul and try him by her Lord. Wisdom has to be able to trust us. But it has to walk us by crooked ways. But with, if we don't let wisdom come in and try us but want to revert back to the old man and old woman. Verse, Jump to verse uh, 19. But if he go wrong. But if that brother or that sister go wrong and fall into that lust and it was tried by wisdom but said, no, this is too much for me, let me revert back to the old man or old woman. Read. She will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. You'll be given to your own ruin. Whatever lust it may be, as minimal or as big as it may seem, it's still something that can overcome you, and any chink in the armor is inviting Satan to come in to pull you back into the world. So this topic about marijuana, edibles, and everything else is relevant because you're being given over to your own ruin because in your own thought you're saying, no, you know what, I'm good. But wisdom has been walking with you by crooked ways this entire time and trying you, and you, and you have failed that test. That's why it's now forsaking you and giving you over to your own ruin. Hey, and that goes with any vice that keeps you unsober. 
This could be, we could be having this class on alcohol. We could be having this class on amphetamines, on any type of other drugs, right? Because there's some people that get high on Percocet and stuff like that, right? Glue. Glue. Uh, a meth. Right? We lost, we lost a brother that was congregating with us right uh, uh, to, to that meth. I mean, he went off. I say brother because he was a brother, right? But he went off on, on that crap. And he knew this truth. And he went off on that thing. Okay? So it's for anything that's a vice. Anything that's a vice that's contrary to the laws of the Most High God. And you talk about it walking with you by crooked, crooked ways and putting you in the box. And this goes to show the evil in our hearts of the carnal man, because especially if that was a thing you did in the world, right? So let's say you were smoking weed, and like Cap said, uh, um, it can go for anything that's a vice to you. But let's say you were into smoking weed, and you're all right with that. What you've done now when you try to say, well, I'm doing it medicinal, is found a way to justify to go back to your vomit. Because those are the things that the Bible calls vomit, a dog returned to their vomit. Those are the things that I brought out with the godlike characteristics last week that we should be ashamed of. What profit were in those things for us? Nothing but death. Um, our, all praises that, you, that you're here. It wasn't planned like that, but that you were able to speak your example. That, Because um, I didn't know to that extent that he said they wanted to give him marijuana. And he didn't just lie over and say, let me, and I don't want you to, I mean, it's not incriminating yourself, but it is what it is. I presume you used to smoke marijuana in the world, right? Maybe. Right? Okay. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Right? Little bit here, right? So he could have used that as an opportunity. He said, oh, man, I got, I got the white man's card to do it now. I'm straight. I'll justify it with scriptures. Right. And I'll justify it with scriptures. And nobody could tell me nothing. But he said, nah, wisdom was with me to the point where I knew. See, that's what, that's what we talk about when we say that Satan's going to come at you in more creative ways. Yeah. Right? It's not just a ham sandwich. It's not just this. He'll find a way to sneak something in there and go, ha ha, I got you, nigga. Got you. Now what you gonna do? All right? You gonna you gonna you gonna let me get my you gonna get the hooks out of you, or you gonna let me continue to reel you in, continue to let you spiral down into more and more heresies? Because let me tell you, that's the other sin in trying to justify that behavior. That's a heresy. That's doctrine contrary to what the scripture says. Understand that thing. Right. Now, like, like, how would it look if I'm standing on the streets passing out flyers on the strip in Las Vegas condemning brothers and sisters for the behavior that they have to be standing in line at a dispensary here in Phoenix on, on Central or on 7th Street or wherever the case that may be, right? Yeah, how do you explain that to somebody that... Wisdom has not walked with them long enough in crooked ways. Right, exactly, and say, oh, well, you know, well, see, brother, see, well, see, what you don't know is I have arthritis, brother, because I was in the war. They don't want to hear that right. because I'm blasting them on the sin that I said that they were committing, but now here I am in line buying, buying uh, weed. Yeah, Come the on. most I do it like that, too. Like, like somebody you gave a flyer to will see that's, you there. That's a rock 130 yeah, all yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll tell you, there was a captain who would teach this. And then his dealer blew up his spot. Needless to say, he's no longer captain. All right? He was put out for a while. Right? First, see, first of all, there's a process in this thing. When it gets to a point where somebody has another doctrine in their head and they're okay with that type of behavior, they need to be addressed in front of the whole body. Right? Scripture talks about you shame them so that they can then repent. Uh, Nehemiah's vice was gambling. Right? So you weren't here that day, but I wasn't going to let you get away with not your, without having your shame. So we, we zoomed you in, right? And then what you told me the other day? You said you needed that. He said, I needed that. See, I know everybody was mortified. Everybody gets mortified when that stuff happens. <laughs> but why? Why they had to do it in front of everybody? Why? I'm going to show you why. There's a scripture later. I'm going to show you why. All right? And sometimes, so the process is you shame them, you watch from home for a little while, and then you get yourself back. So back to your point with the weed, this captain, right, he was shamed, he was put out, kept in contact with or whatever, and then it's up to that brother or sister to keep those lines open, to show godly sorrow, to bring forth fruits, meat for repentance, and then you can get your process back. So now that brother's sitting as a member. 
right? And so he's back as a member, but it wasn't a quick turnaround. It took a little while, right? And then if it be the Lord's will, he'll continue to recover himself. And if he was worthy enough to be a captain at one point, then the Most High's will is that he'll recover himself and he'll wind up getting that, getting that thing back. But it takes a while sometimes through that process. What were you going to say, officer? He needs a mic. It's crazy the example that you were saying that you would be like out, you know, in the weed line and somebody see you, whatever. Last night at the uh, flyer mission, there was a brother, um, you know, he used to congregate with us. I don't know if he still comes back or not, but he has his fringes tucked in and, you know, he smelled like weed. It's How do you like, know they were tucked in? He came over to show you that he does have them? They were just tucked? Yeah. yeah so but he was smoking weed? He smelled like weed. So, like, it's just crazy how the most high work, you think you get away with something. And then boom. <laughs> so that goes to show that that smell is so strong that there's no way you can't tell when somebody's smoking weed. Right? right there's no accident with there's that. No, there's no way you can't tell if somebody is in, is in a non-sober state. There's right. just no way. I don't right. understand. I mean, re you don't have right. to be uh, 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 Quincy Jones. Not Quincy Jones. Uh, uh, Quincy. Dick, Dr. Dick, Man. Dick Tracy? Yeah, you don't got to be a, 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 a... Oh, Dr. Quinn Medicine... You don't got to be anybody that knows anything about anything about that to know that. He, he going back to like early 80s. Yeah, yeah. I was only like five. Y'all remember the show remember. Quincy? No, he's not talking about. There was Quincy MD. Quincy was, MD. Was it a girl? Man. Was it a woman? No, nah, no, nah, it was no. a dude from our couple. Right. Jack the, Klugman. Like before House, right? Because House was like that. Right. Y'all know House, right? Everybody remembers House. That's more right. recent. You're going too far back. House. I'm going back what with is this thing? <laughs> with he, ha he has to discover the medical mysteries that come in the hospital, right? Quincy. He's saying you don't got to be house, I said which Quincy was really Jones. Quincy. <laughs> right. So his point is you don't got to have that skill set in order to know. It's pretty obvious. Hey. Tell her their eyes, right? Their behavior. Right. Hungry. Right. 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 Let me get a Jeremiah 31, verse 19, real quick. This is how. Because Captain had just said it perfectly. If you did it in the world and you bring that into this, then there's something wrong with that. The things that you did in the world should make you feel ashamed because they were contrary to what God said. And that shame you should feel when you fall into sin, especially willful sin. Jeremiah 31 verse 19. 31 verse 19. This is what sin is supposed to do. And this is the purpose of people being stood up. This is the purpose of, of sin being addressed openly for those that say, oh, why, why? Man, 2012, 2013, it was like a weekly thing. I was like, man. Right, there was like a run. There was no payback challenges. It was who was getting blasted that week. Like, right. That's what we did right. for like Now you got the payback and shout out Tuesday challenge. After class, it was who's, who's getting blasted, whose sin's being revealed this week. Every week, I was like, man, this is what's up. I love it. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 19. Surely after that I was turned, I repented. And after that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. You see what the scripture says? You should be ashamed and confounded that you still bear the reproach of your youth. The things you, Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Sin is a childish thing. That's why King David made it clear, show thyself a man. That means put on the whole armor of God and, and repent and keep the commandments. So when you fall into these things, it's not meant to just uh, ostracize you and that's it. No, you should be ashamed of these things. And then the rest of us can learn from the example so that way we don't fall into that same folly. Because we're all trying to make it to the same destination. And that's the kingdom of heaven. Oh, praises. Let's get Wisdom of Solomon 16, 12. The woes. Let's get woes 16, 12. W-O-S. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16, verse 12. For it was neither herb or mollifying plaster that restored them to health, but thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. Right, now does that mean... You don't use the herb or the mollifying black. It's saying that God will show favor to those that are in his word and in his spirit and keeping his commandments with whatever medication is done and prescribed by skillful hands. Meaning you stay in the spirit, which means you can say no to certain things. If you know, do, you can't listen. I'm going to tell you something. And this is it is secretive because they don't make it very known. 
it's a little bit of a pain in the behind, but they have it in place for Amalek. So if you need antibiotics, a lot of those things come in a gel cap. You can request that those come in a vegetarian, in a bovine, or in a fish gelatin capsule. You don't have to just take it from uh, whatever. So if certain medications have something, for example, insulin, the most popular insulin has something to do with uh, porcine, meaning pigs. They have alternatives to meet your exemptions. But we like to just be like, well, Mr. I gotta do what I gotta do. It's captivity. I gotta, I gotta run with it. It's a hashtag captivity. I gotta, you know, I got no choice. You know, let every man seek his own salvation. Right? Meaning that there's things in there. There's ways that you can get around that stuff. But the point that I want here, the emphasis is, really, really, it's the word of the Most High. So do you think that if you're doing something contrary to him, you're ever going to be fully healed from whatever affliction that you have? No. That's Satan lining you up so that you can continue to take more and more and more of whatever's not right for you. And that's how it starts. You give it a little daylight. You give place to the devil means he gets a foothold. Right? The hooks is in you. And then he starts to reel you in. And it's just like fishing, right? What do you do? See, I'm not a fisherman. Right? I've been fishing twice in my life. But I know some basics because I've watched people. The fish, the fish do the bait, right? And they tell you, don't spend the whole time reeling it in. Let them go out a little bit, right? Reel them in. Let them go out, right? That's how, that's how it works with, when Satan has his hooks in you. He got you. Something will come up, right? Maybe it's brought out. You're corrected. Then he gives you a little, a little leeway, right? And that's the wisdom, walking by the crooked ways to see if you're going to look for the out. And then he pulls you in a little more. And what, what's really the aim of that when you're fishing is to tie the fish out, right? Let him go, come pull him back, let him go, pull him back. So it's a little easier when you bring that fish in, right? That's how I understand it. I don't know. I don't. Right. I went like this? Yeah. No, that's the old one without the reel. That's the one with the, the stick and the, that's how long ago I went fishing. <laughs> First Peter 1.13. I know, he the fishing champion over here from Tabernacle, so I know. First Peter 1.13. Hey, Damon, you, you know what? You saw how Judah did us, man? Because, because Northern Kingdom 1 is that we had to have cheated. Well, his fish was smaller. Yeah, but he had 100. You had like 8. No, nah, he uh, got there at like 3 in the morning, set up his tent in the dark, and then went fishing at 5.30 and so on. So there's no excuse, bro. Like, <laughs> right. Come on. Come on. <laughs> First Peter 1 Peter 1.13. The book of First Peter, chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Right. So the scripture is telling us that we need to be sober minded. It says the, lo the loins of your mind need to be girded up. This is without psychoactives, without alcohol. Remember I said earlier, if evil communication could corrupt you, you don't think drugs and outside things, right, alcohol and stuff like that can mess you up? So do we have this warning just because of the world? And now you're adding something else into the mix that could potentially weaken that sober-mindedness, right? That's a commandment. We're commanded to be sober. Now, let's get Psalms 104 and 14 because you hear the food part, right? It's food. It's food. It's edible. See, it's said for, it's said for meat. We're going to break that down with definitions in a little bit. The book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 14. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. Because that's another one you'll see. It's herb for the service of man. Come on. That he may bring forth food out of the earth. That he may bring forth food out of the earth. Are you eating a salad of marijuana flowers and leaves? Are you eating a marijuana vegetarian sandwich? No, they put it in things, right? It's not nourishment is my point, and we're going to break that down. Food implies nourishment. So when you consume psychoactives, that's not nourishment. The brownie is the nourishment. That's what has the carbs, the fats, the proteins, the egg, or if it's a vegetarian, a vegan one, maybe it's not egg, whatever it is, right? 
The weed component in that is not the nourishment. That stuff is, man, that, I forgot. There was some movie I was watching, some comedy movie, and they ate, like, the weed brownies. It wasn't because their back was hurting or nothing. They bought it so they could get high on the golf course. He said, no, 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 no. It was gummies, but it wasn't pork gelatin. It was beef gelatin. Yeah, right. So yeah, because now they got gummies, too, weed, weed gummies, marijuana gummies. Right? So the emphasis is food. Right? The emphasis is food. Psalms 136 and 25. The book of Psalms, chapter 136 and verse 25. Who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. He meant it for food. He meant it for food. He gave food, and the all flesh is dealing. Remember, we read about the animals in verse 30 and the people in verse 29. He meant it for food. Get Job 28 and 5. The book of Job, chapter, chapter 28 and verse 5. As for the earth, out of it cometh bread. Out of it cometh bread. Bread. Now, we know... That you don't, there's not a bread leaf, right? It's not like a head of lettuce that you see popping out the ground, right? You don't go like when you grab a carrot and you pull the, the, the leaf out and, and a loaf of bread pop out, right? So he's talking about the components of those herbs, of those every green thing. We are to make food with it. Not all of it is just let me consume it, right? You could go pick fruit off the thing and just eat it like that. But some things, what? You make bread. There's components that you put together to make your meal, to make what's nutritious for you. So the weed is not, so when it talks about, and you try to use that angle to justify, that's not what it's talking about. That's not. Let me get the definition for meat, right? Because in Genesis it said meat. Food. So when you read in Genesis 1 and it says, I gave all the herb for meat, it means food, especially solid food as distinguished from drink. The edible part of something as distinguished from its covering, such as a husk or shell. Now, click on food. A material consisting essentially of protein, carbohydrate, and fat used in the body of an organism to sustain growth, repair, and vital process and to furnish energy. The marijuana effect, even the CBD, the part that's proven to help with pain, doesn't heal the body. It deals with a symptom. So you know me, I'm gonna get all technical with it. I'm gonna take it to another level as you read the words. Food actually is used in your system to help things break down and build up in your metabolic process. So when you take the marijuana and you're saying that uh, it's food and it's for my pain, it doesn't meet the definition of food. Bring it back up. Any day now. All right. Um, so the point is it sustains growth, repair, and vital processes to furnish energy. It says nutriment in a solid form. Now, let's get nourishment. Food. It's for nourishment. Food. Click on nutriment. You know, I'm going to drill it down. Something that nourishes. Something that nourishes. Fewer nutrients are lost in steaming than in boiling. And color retention is better. better. Click on nutrient. A nutrient furnishes nourishment. A substance or ingredient that promotes growth provides energy, and maintains life. Right. Don't say nothing about getting high. It don't say nothing about uh, it's okay to have the psychoactive component. Marijuana consumption, whether it's smoked or eaten, does not meet any of the requirements of nutrients as the most high intended. Hey, on the contrary, it breaks down your brain cells. Yes. Yes. So it does the total opposite of what food is supposed yes. to do. Now, pull up this article. So the argument was, I don't get high, I don't smoke it, and I don't feel high when I eat it. 
why edibles hit you so much harder than smoking. Warning, don't eat the second half of that brownie. It's a tale as old as the drug itself. Friends make pop brownies. Friends gather to eat pop brownies. Two hours pass and nothing happens. So friends eat more special brownies. Then 30 minutes later, friends are literally so high that they have to remind themselves when to breathe. Smoking, see I could never do that because I like sweets so much. So I'd have ate the whole tray of brownies with some milk and be jacked up later. So <laughs> smoking and consuming marijuana are very different. And so it's established that smoking gets you high. The excuse that the eating doesn't is about to be obliterated. Uh, so smoking and consuming marijuana are very different. And anyone who has tried both just knows just how different they can be. So if that was your thing and you're saying it doesn't affect you and you used to smoke it, that's a lie. It says you know how different it is when you eat it. It hits different. But why the hell is that? Thanks to a video created by the ASAP Science YouTube channel, which we'll watch after the article, we finally understand the biological processes that take place when you smoke pot versus when you eat it. In plain English, when you smoke marijuana, the chemical is absorbed into your bloodstream within minutes. It travels to your brain, and boom, you're high. Okay, let me see more. What takes place when you eat marijuana is best described by comedian Joe Rogan, who said in his stand-up special on Netflix, when you eat marijuana, it's processed by your liver, and it produces something called 11 hydroxy metabolite. That's five times more psychoactive than THC. And it lets you talk to dolphins. So uh, if you're in this truth, you thinking you talking to Moses, transfigured Christ, uh, Elijah. Hey, you thinking you're reading the scripture and that the scripture's telling you, you justified. Yep. It's five times worse than smoking. Five times. Basically, consuming the exact same amount of THC as you smoke makes you much, much higher for almost quadruple the amount of time. So not only are you not sober-minded, you're not sober-minded for four times longer than if you smoked it. The effects of eating cannabis could leave you high for longer than eight hours, even if there isn't an obscene amount of THC in the edibles. Man, so think about that. If you sleep eight, that's a third of the day. You're high for eight, that's another third. That means maybe you're only sober, depending how often you consume them, for a third of the day if you eat them. And then you got to recoup from that high. Right, right. You're not even fully normal. Nope. Edibles take so long to produce effects because the THC is first processed by your stomach, then metabolized by your liver into another chemical. That's called first pass. In pharmacology, they call that first pass. It has to go through, it has to go through your liver, then your body disperses it into the bloodstream to be used by the different parts of the body. That happens for everything, not just drugs. That's food, that's medicine, anything that you take uh, ingest, all right? All before making its way into your bloodstream and finally your brain. It does not bypass the brain because you ate it. It still hits you in the dome. Scroll down, we're not gonna watch the video yet. The upside to consuming the chemical rather than smoking it is that you don't inhale all of the carcinogens that come with smoking. So you could say, I eat it because I don't want lung cancer. But you still get high. But since edibles aren't regulated, you can never really estimate how much you're going to get or how much you should eat to get the desired effect, right? So you know how some people's food is more salty than others? Some people's weed brownies is more potent than others. And there's no way for you to tell. However, interesting, however, ingesting too much THC has never killed anyone. According to an article from Business Insider, that's because it would take 1,500 pounds in 15 minutes to kill you. So once again, Joe Rogan put it best. You're not going to die. You're going to think you're going to die, but everybody lives. Now, is the sin when it says defile the temple that it jacks you up? No, we established what the sin was. It's the sober-minded piece, right? It's the sober-minded piece. Let's watch the video. It's short, two minutes, 35 seconds.
As marijuana becomes legalized throughout North America, many are trying edibles for the first time as a healthier option. But with edible marijuana providing such a different experience than smoking, how does it work and is eating pot actually better for you? When you heat cannabis, you effectively change the chemical makeup of compounds within it called cannabinoids. Smoking heats it to around 800 degrees Celsius and converts THCA to delta 9 THC, which binds to receptors in your brain, making them continually fire and causing your imagination, thought thoughts and perceptions to magnify. This is why every thought can feel like a significant one. And because it travels straight from your lungs into the blood of why you think you in the spirit, right? You think he's I'm a genius. I'm so what man, I figured it out. You can smoke weed. Them niggas is wrong that been teaching that thing. <laughs> they're, they're weak. They're square. It's ridiculous. Come on stream and to your brain, the drug works within minutes and lasts about two to three hours. But when making edibles, the weed is heated to around 150 degrees Celsius, burning less of the actual plant and minimizing carcinogens. THC is lipophilic, not water soluble, so the activated THC must be dissolved into something fatty like oil or butter. And once this substance is consumed, the onset of the high is delayed as the drug Stop. is absorbed. Stop. So you say, it doesn't make me high. I'm not feeling it. Come on more slowly through your gut. But this high typically lasts four to eight hours, and most report feeling more high than compared to smoking marijuana. This is because when you eat edible weed, the THC is first metabolized by the liver before entering the bloodstream, and here, Delta 9 THC also becomes 11-OH THC, which passes the brain barrier more rapidly and is a more potent chemical. So using the same amount of marijuana, you actually get more high with edibles because it ends up creating both Delta 9 THC and 11 OHTHC, which is a stronger compound. Which means and it gives you two spirits instead of one, all right? If you want to keep it simple. You don't understand all the chemical things? It gives you two instead of one. Come on psychotropic types of cannabinoids acting on your neurons, you'll be high for longer. Of course, you also get to skip out on the toxic chemicals that smoking provides like carbon monoxide, bronchial irritants, and tumor initiators. Smoking anything means you're inhaling cancer-causing molecules, so if you can get high without smoking, it will be healthier for your lungs and body. The downside? It's much harder to control the high you'll get, because it can take up to one to two hours to feel the full effects, and the dosage can vary significantly, modulating the effects or titrating as it's called is much more difficult, and as a result, you can end up a lot higher than you intended to. But unlike those who consume too much alcohol, opioids, or other drugs, you won't be suffering any serious long-term harm, toxicity, or lethal overdose if you do consume more than you intended. If you've ever wondered why marijuana gives you the munchies, check out our ASAP. All right, stop. So that's it on that. So remember, you got to emphasize the sin is the altered state. That's the defiling of the temple, because they're putting out a lot of stuff saying... They're putting out a lot of stuff now saying that it's not bad for your health, right? Only if you smoke it. Again, they, they, that's Satan trying to come up with crafty ways to let you fall into that stuff, all right? Um, talk, because I gotta use the bathroom before I go to this next component. I drink too much water. <laughs> Good. Hey, you got something? Go ahead, yeah, talk. Um, let's go to Levit Leviticus 5. This is what you gotta understand, too. Th when you guys, um, this, is not the, this is not new, okay? I'm gonna put it out. This is not new. It's something ongoing. But guess what? Sometimes when things gotta come out, they gotta come out. You know what I mean? The Most High shows you mercy. That shows you, shows you uh, a, a time to get yourself right. But guess when it comes out, it comes out. Uh, go ahead, Leviticus five and one. The Book of Leviticus chapter five verse one. And if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing, and is a witness whether he hath seen or known of it. If he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Guess what? You guys got to tell on people. And guess what? You're saving your brother's soul when you do that. I'll tell you this. If, if I'm around brothers, just like we, I saw the brother last night, or I've been around brothers and stuff, guess what? You smell that brother. You, 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 you have to. If you live with them or if you're around them a lot of times, you smell that brother. And if you're not coming out forward, guess what? You're going to bear his iniquity. You're going to bear that sin. The most I might not bring it today or tomorrow, but he's going to bring it eventually. What does the Bible say about us? He's going to what? Make us pure gold. We ha that's, that's the repentance of us, of the being a, uh, born again. There's always something to be examining yourself, looking at yourself. Guess what? I need to do this. Hey, you know what? The council has brought out, told me this. I guess what? I, 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 you, you start examining it. When it goes on paper or you just see certain things, guess what? You got to examine yourself. Like everyone is examining yourself. 
each day, we have to look at that and guess what? Repent of it. Hey, when you full because you eat too much, you give off a sign of that, right? You sleep, you tired, your stomach's big, right? You feel lazy, right? When you drunk, the same thing. Anything that you do that's going to alter your body, which is what this does, you're going to see signs of it. It ain't normal. Am I right or right? It ain't normal. So I, I, I don't buy that excuse that you didn't know that something was going on. There's no way in the world. You can't tell a person's behavior changes for, 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 uh, under different circumstances. I, I can't buy that. I can't. When somebody's angry, you could tell. When somebody will not even show it, but there's something about the countenance that tells you that something ain't right. So you could tell in someone's countenance if they're not in their normal state of mind. Don't give me that BS. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.